13 years ago, you made Time Code, mm -hmm. where you used the multiple layered narratives. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, how do you feel today where we use second screens all the time? We watch a movie and at the same time we use an iPhone. How do you feel about that? I think the initial optimism about kind of multitasking mm -hmm. and multi-screening and all of that, I think, was a little premature. Um, I now wonder about sort of attention deficit myself, you know. And I also am convinced there's a kind of almost like a heroin addiction going on now to, to screens. You know, we, we used to be neighbors, but um, sometimes if I go and eat by myself, you know, you're in a restaurant and, and you're kind of like, mm, and you get your phone out and you kind of pointlessly start checking for emails and things like that. You know you just checked half an hour ago. There's something very comforting about, you know, this little bright screen and, and you know, and, I, and now my biggest fear is that I will actually hit a cyclist in Islington uh, because I, I don't know if, what it was like when you were there, but at nine o'clock in the morning, there's a, hundreds of cyclists down um, Rose the Rose Upper Rose. Street and yeah. And they're, they're texting. Um, I really worry about this kind of bright screen addiction. You know, When I made Time Code and Hotel and <clears throat> it was experimenting with, you know, they are totally related screens to each other right. and their parallel narrative. They, they weren't like, let's also check something else, you know. Right, when you sit in the cinema and you check your emails, so that's not, and there's no relation between the two. No, there is no relation to that. And that I personally, it makes me very, it makes me very upset because also those screens are like so distracting. You know, so uh, you know you're aware of even if you don't see the screen, suddenly people's faces are all lit up. I don't know if you've seen Spring Breakers, have you? I uh have. -huh. Yeah, I love that shot at the beginning with all the students and yes. the, the entire lighting is coming from these screen panels. There is cheap equipment everywhere, mm -hmm. and people are able to film all the time, broadcast all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you see that as a good development, as a chance for everyone, or do you feel overwhelmed by the flood of images? What, what do you? How do you feel I about think it's a good question because the answer to all all facets of it is yes, 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 yes. You know, it's good that the equipment's there. It's great. It's good there's a democratization of equipment and therefore money. Um, it's perhaps not so good that it inspires a kind of almost like a diarrhea of imagery. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like, and you can see also by the way people are holding the cameras <clears throat> because there is nothing precious about any part of it. People multitask while they're filming and they're kind of almost like checking their phone <laughs> as they're filming, you know, yeah. and there's no kind of, um, let's say, physical dynamic in the way that they are relating to the camera. It used to be when you held a camera, you know, you needed two hands. Just because you ne don't necessarily need two hands doesn't mean it's good to use one hand. Because there's something about if you you know you talk to a dancer, there's something about <clears throat> the way the body relates to an image. So if you you know if it's like this, and there's this kind of concentration of the of the shoulders and the mm -hmm. arms and and then the torso and all of that, as opposed to this you know right. or whatever, because the cameras are so light. Um, I think the end result is not so good. I think the truth is, as in any art form. Um, I was talking to a writer about writing, for example. So let's say a pencil is not very expensive, mm -hmm. paper is fairly cheap, right? A notebook, etc. So, you know, anybody can write a novel. So yeah, I think in the, the final answer is it's it will even itself out. You know, within this vast choice of, of visual image makers, you know, some will make themselves known to in a, in, to a wider audience, and and people will respond. You still need to be good. And filmmaking didn't get any easier. I saw you film yesterday, Suspensions of Disbelief, and I was wondering, young filmmakers who have a similar approach to filmmaking like you do, like a very avant-garde way, do they even have a chance nowadays in the industry and how do they make themselves heard? Well, I'm glad you used the word industry because, you know, one of the biggest problems, you know, again, if we do a parallel with sort of the novelist or, you know, uh, visual art or whatever, you know, um, the idea uh, of big business is not so, it's, it's particularly prevalent in filmmaking. You know, as some really crass producer said to me, you know, it's called the, it's called the film business. It's a business, you know, and it, and it is. So on the level of, you know, can you get into a multiplex with your, with your art result? No, you can't. Can you with suspensions no. of disbelief? No, 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 no. You know, there's like one for the heart and then you, uh, now I should do a thriller. You know, right. uh, or something like that, that has more mainstream possibility that of making money or something or like that. Or maybe a commercial like you've done in the past for TFL. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 